Well, I knew this time would come. I just didn't know it would be this soon. I looked over at my little baby Synology NAS and she had a lost drive. Now, honestly, I'm really impressed with this thing because I had set it up four years ago not knowing anything about network attached storage drives. Um, you know, I am a computer guy and I have built my own computers before, but I didn't really know anything about networking or network drives at all. I was getting into photography, I needed a place to store all of my photos, and uh, this seemed to work for me. So what we had had in here, and this had served me so well, uh, I actually even use it as a Plex server, is we have two of these four terabyte WD red drives. Um, these are 5400 RPM and they actually only have 64 megs of cache. So not the highest performing drives, but they've gotten the job done for the last four years. And honestly, I knew this, this was coming soon. The drive started making some clicking sounds as of late and um, well, I just thought I had a little bit more time. With any problem comes a solution and you know, we can't just fix this. I'm not gonna go buy just two new drives and put them in here, no. That, that wouldn't be the proper thing to do. The proper thing to do would be to take this little power efficient, uh, tiny little network attached storage drive and replace it with this. So you might be thinking that's just a normal PC and you're right, but this is actually an old PC that was about to be donated that I was able to pick up from a family member and uh, repurpose for this new network attached storage drive that I'm going to be putting together using Unraid. This machine consists of a 550 Ti, which shows you how old this thing is, a i7-2600K and more Molex connectors than you would ever want to see in your life. The other thing this has is space for up to six spinning drives. It also has uh, a bunch of these five and a quarter inch drive bays, which will be great for future use if we want to add something like an icy dock hot swappable drive bay, which we could use for uh, 2.5 inch SSDs. Um, we could also use them for hot swappable NAS drives as well. For storage, we'll be going with three of the Iron Wolf NAS drives from Seagate. These are the newer drives that are a little bit slower. Uh, they spin at 5,400 RPM instead of 7,200. Um, but honestly, I just went with what was cheap and affordable since this is mainly going to be just mass storage for um, my photography files and a Plex server for at home. The one thing that's great about this compared to the Synology NAS that I had before is we'll be able to set up an SSD cache drive. So here we have an Inland Professional um, 256 gig SSD that I picked up from Micro Centers for I think about 20 bucks. This drive will be more than enough for this uh, this use case. We won't need anything super reliable or robust since this is just a cache system, um, but honestly, these drives are really surprising cheap and they get the job done. So if you need something quick and cheap for an SSD storage, maybe for just games or something, uh, these Inland Professional drives, I highly recommend. And then last but not least, we will need a jump drive. And this is going to run the Unraid system that's going to be used to power up this entire PC. Now, the reason why I picked this Samsung one instead of a SanDisk or a cheap um, Micro Center drive that you can get from them um, was due to watching uh, Space Invader 1's uh, YouTube channel on the best jump drive or flash drive for Unraid. Um, he compared, I think about like seven or eight different flash drives um, in a series of tests and this one came out on top and since he knows Unraid so well, uh, I decided to pick one of these up. I think this was about $8 as well. All this stuff will be linked in the description below if you guys wanna build something similar and I'll also have a link to Space Invader 1's channel below because he helped me out a ton with this. His videos are super precise, very easy to follow and honestly, if you watch a few of them, you'll be able to do this yourself without a problem. Since this was a computer that someone had used previously, there's really not much that we have to do. We'll have to move a few case fans around because the previous setup didn't really work well from an airflow standpoint. It had uh, one intake and three exhaust fans. So we're kind of gonna rearrange this and do two intakes and two exhaust, uh, putting one intake directly on the front of the case so that way it will blow onto the hard drives directly. Other than that, our SATA power is already ran, our SATA connections are already ran, and all we need to do is slide in those drives and get the operating system booted up.
go. We were able to boot up into the BIOS and uh, looks like everything is running fine. I unfortunately wasn't able to capture the whole entire first boot up. Unfortunately, the uh, Elgato st Stream Capture um, HD60S, I think it is, that I was using to capture this screen um, would kind of make the BIOS splash screen kind of skip and I wasn't able to get into it. So I had to actually boot it up and then convert over to the Elgato. That's why you didn't see that initial process. But here we are in the BIOS and as you can see, everything is running fine. Um, we're not really gonna be doing any overclocking. So that's not why we're here. Uh, as you can see over here, the unit's just in uh, the Asus optimal pre-configuration which is gonna be more than enough for this. Um, I did mention that there might be a Plex server on here, I believe. Um, there will be, but this is going to be running very light when it comes to transcoding. Uh, Plex is only used pretty much here in, uh, in the house. We don't really use it anywhere else and the devices and the bandwidth that we have here won't really require any transcoding. So we'll be good with, with the way it's set up just now. But the one thing we do wanna check, uh, as you can see down here, is to make sure that we have the boot priority correct. So as you can see, we do not wanna have a hard drive be the first thing that it tries to check when we go to boot. As you can see here is our Samsung uh, flash drive that we have the Unraid system on. So this is what we're going to want to make sure that is our first boot priority. It looks like this is the other portion of the Samsung flash drive, which is fine. We're gonna go and take those hard drives and we're gonna move them all the way to the end of this boot priority. Um, how this is set up in your motherboard may be different. Uh, this is just how this Asus board goes about doing it. So now that we got this figured out, that's the only thing we needed to do in the BIOS, we can now go run through this again, let the Unraid system kind of start up on its own, and then we can go check in on the system over in the web interface. All right, and boot sequence is complete. So now what we need to take a look at is the IP address. It looks like it is a .38 IP address. Um, I actually know that because I have assigned a static IP address to this and I would recommend that you do the same. I'll create a video on doing that if um, you're interested. That's something that differs depending on the type of networking equipment that you have. But if you're going to be using uh, network drives that you're going to map, uh, I highly recommend using a static IP address. That way, when things go on and off and shut down, it'll always uh, allocate this unit or this device to that specific IP address. So since this has a web interface for us to interact with this system on, we are going to go to the top here and we are going to type in that IP address. As you can see, I've already typed in, oops, as you can see, I've already typed in this IP address before it actually autofills. So we're going to go to that. And here you go. This is the first screen that you'll see whenever you log into the unit for the first time. One thing to note, and I probably should have mentioned this before, is that Unraid is not a free software. FreeNAS, and I think there's Proxmox is another one, um, those are kind of free, so there are benefits to those. Personally, I just like the ease of use, reliability, and all of the forums and just community out there for Unraid. I think I mentioned uh, Space Invader 1 before in this video, who's linked, uh, his channel's linked below. Check him out. Watching his videos definitely kind of made me sway towards Unraid and just the simplicity of it as a whole. So I will end up buying uh, a license key for this software, but for today's purposes, we are just going to go ahead and we can get a trial key. So we're just going to check yes and start our trial. It now assigns a specific um, ID to your flash drive and you are good to go. As you can see in the top right corner, we have a 30-day uh, we have a 30-day trial, and it shows you the the countdown up there, um, and also shows you your uptime. So, with that being said, I think we're going to end the video here. I will do another video, kind of uh, showing the next steps of this process. This is the first time that I've done any of this stuff, so. Please bear with me as I continue to go through these. I'm doing the best I can uh, with the limited knowledge in video work and uh, Unraid in general uh, as I have. As things progress, I'll definitely go and re remake some of these videos and uh, add more in-depth information as I can. In the meantime, if you like the video and want to see more, 
please subscribe. I'm going to be making a lot of technology, personal finance, and automotive videos. So hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching.